how many times God has been so good with us. How many times. And sometimes we forget about it. We forget about how good He is. So God, we just want to take this moment to thank you. To say thank you.
amen. Can you say amen? Amen. You know, this week I was reading through Psalm 23, and it starts by saying, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then it speaks of some nice things, and then we get to a part where it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Then when we get to verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to know, if you say today that the Lord is your shepherd, that does not mean that difficult and dark days will not come your way or that you won't face difficult and dark wet days. It doesn't mean that you won't face hardship. It doesn't mean that you won't face suffering. It doesn't mean that you won't face heartbreak. But if the Lord is your shepherd, surely goodness and mercy will follow you. Whatever you face or wherever you go, God's goodness and mercy will follow you if you're a believer. If you're not, then you just face the situation. I think many times we face the situation, but we don't realize what's behind us. And that is God's goodness and mercy. It's there to catch you when you fall. It's there to carry you when you cannot go forward and you're weary and you're tired. It's there to comfort you when you're broken. God is good, friends. He is good. And He cannot be anything but good. He is consistently and constantly good. Everything about Him is good, and everything He does is good. We're going to sing just a little bit more of the goodness of God. Let's sing that a little bit more. expresses your loving kindness to us and thank you God that you first loved us that you reached out to us by sending your son to die on a cross for our sins God we just want to glorify your name today we want to lift your name up we want to praise your name we want to walk in the truth Lord Help us today, Lord, to know that you have our back, that goodness and mercy are following us, and God, that we can rest in that. The broken can be comforted, 
in that right there. We worship you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm going to say we have around about three or 4,000 people here today. You know we only have one service today, and so we do have quite a few people. And so just a couple of announcements, but before I do that, I want to welcome everyone to Panama International Church. Amen. All right, we got one amen. <laughs> one person glad to be here. Well, I'm glad that you are here. I want to just give a shout out to our online audience and say welcome to Panama International Church. If you're visiting for the first time, I don't want to embarrass you. Would you just slip your hand up just quick? And you're not going to do anything else, but say, oh, God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Visit, God bless you. Anyone else? We want to ask our first-time visitors that after the service, you would go through those double doors and go take a right into the first room. And I always say this, but I'm not going to say, well, I won't say it today. But we have uh, people there that are waiting to meet you and greet you. We just want to take a moment of your time. We have a gift that we want to give you. We want to connect with you. So please stop by the connections room. It just takes a couple minutes, and we'll be able to connect with you. We're still getting new people to enroll for life groups. Now, if you're, uh, every person should be in a life group. Life happens in Christian community, amen? And we need each other like coals in a fire. If you take one of those coals out all by themselves, they will burn out. We need to stay lit on fire, and we do that through the Holy Spirit and being with each other. So register online at our www.paintchurch.com for one of our life groups. We have the best life groups on the planet. Amen. Amen. Amen there, some encouragement. And we have another announcement. Remember, next week we have two services, one at 9 and one at 11. We'll go back to the normal schedule. It was only for this Sunday because of the holidays. But next week, you can register right now. The registration is open. We have to do that to comply with Minsa. But register for the 9 or 11 o'clock service next week, two services. And then we have another announcement. We have our me, you, and him. Yo, tu y él. This is a married event for married couples. We already have 56 people registered. And if they're, praise the Lord. I think that is the greatest number that we've ever had registered for, I'm not sure, for a married event. But please, 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 if you are married, husband, wife, you need to be at this event. And it's next Saturday at 4 o'clock. November the 13th, and so we want to encourage you to sign up, go to our church website, go to our events page, and then you'll see this event, and you'll need to sign up so that we can buy the proper amount of food and everything. And then we have uh, uh, the last announcement, but I really want you to hear this announcement. There's a lot of information to this announcement. We have our Christmas outreach on November the 11th at 9 o'clock. You say, what is the Christmas outreach? Well, I'm glad that you asked. See, if you want to ask, then I cannot answer. The Christmas outreach is where we go out and we go to a place where there's kids that would not normally receive a gift for Christmas, and we give them a gift, and more than that, we share the love of Christ. Amen? And so here's what we need you to do. If you would like to buy a gift for a child, then after the service, you'll go right out the doors and when, before you leave out the glass doors, there's a hospitality table. There will be candy canes there. You will take a candy cane. It will have a child's name on that candy cane. We already have the children picked in a certain area. And so you will take that candy cane. You will take that child. Pray for that child. Pray for that child. Pray for that child. For that child. Buy a gift. It can be somewhere between $15 and $25. And then you will need to bring that gift with the child's name written on the gift by November, Sunday, November 28th. And uh, also we want to invite you to, uh, to attend the outreach. If you want to be a part of that outreach on the 11th of, of December at 9 o'clock, then you can come and you can go. And if you want more information, this mighty is 
is a staff member. She's doing a great job. You just talk to her after the service, okay? Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord today? I get you to say that, and then I call the ushers up. Come on up, ushers. <laughs> For the offerings, tithes and offerings. So this morning I was praying and praying and praying, and I was just praying for different situations that are happening and different people that are going through difficult times. And so I asked the Lord for a verse this morning in the tithes and offerings. And this is the verse that came to my heart. Don't miss this. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. I like what Tony Evans said, that our giving whether it be giving financially to the Lord or serving others with the gifts that God's given us, the spiritual gifts, that our giving shouldn't be a job, it should be a joy. When you have experienced the grace of God in your life and God has transformed your life, then in any, any of the means, whether it be financially or reaching out to love and serve others, your life is transformed and it is a joy to give. And so we step forth with the right heart attitude this morning. And that is a heart of joy to give to the Lord's work, to give by serving others, however the Lord leads. But this morning, we give to advance the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before your mighty name, and we just exalt you. We pray for these tithes and offerings. God, we thank you for the faithfulness of your people and Lord, we've been able to do so many things in missions and reaching the lost with the gospel. And Lord, we thank you. We praise you. And God, we just pray that you would take these tithes and offerings and advance them for your kingdom and for your work, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Church. I said, Welcome to Panama International Church. God bless you. God bless you. Put your hands together to the Lord. 
First of all, you know, um, we want to welcome those of you at home as well watching us. Um, like we always say, the first time, your visitor, after that, your family. So we love you and we thank you for joining us here today. Um, first of all, I just want to thank, you know, the Lord and also Paul and Carla for this wonderful opportunity that has been given to me today to share the Word of God with God's lovely people. I hope that the Word is a blessing to you in the way that it was a blessing to me as well. So uh, never mind, I'm going to be preaching to myself here today. So if you want to join me, I will be um, excited about that as well. Um, I want to take something that I heard my brother Maximiliano said when it was his turn to, to share the word, and he said that it was an honor, but also a great responsibility. And we don't take lightly the opportunity that God gives us to share his word. There's a lot of things that go behind <laughs> closed doors, but we know that in everything, God get, gets the victory. Amen? Amen? So I need you guys to preach this service. So I need you guys awake, because I know Paul sometimes has to be fighting with us for us to join him, but I know today we're going to be involved in what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, I'm really excited about this message. As a matter of fact, I'm excited about every message that God gives us, where we can share his word, where we can grow and be everything that, that, that God wants us to be. A couple weeks ago, um, we started the series Battle Ready. How many of you are battle ready now? Four people are battle ready. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Amen. But it started out with our brother Maximiliano speaking about the spiritual warfare that's going on that we don't see. And before you start battling with the person next to you, you need to make sure you know that the battle is not against flesh and blood. The battle is something else moving behind. And sometimes we're too caught up fighting each other and fighting people when we need to fight the spirit that's moving behind that person. Amen? So then we moved on to the belt of truth. If you don't have the belt of truth, you can forget about everything else. But also we moved on to the breastplate of righteousness. And this is talking about the righteousness that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. This we can find in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. We also find the shoes of readiness, which is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with people. The shield of faith, we saw it last week. Paul spoke about that and how we need the shield of faith to protect ourselves from what the enemy is trying to do. But today we will be seeing the helmet of salvation. How many of you know that the helmet of salvation is important for what God is doing in our lives? When you think of a Roman, when you think of a soldier suited up for battle, the helmet was basically the last piece of the armor that they would put on. Let me tell you, you have to choose to put it on. It's not going to be automatically. You got to put it on. And I want to let you know that you have to put it on because there's a battle that's being waged against you and against me. A lot of times you think that if I get involved, that's when the enemy is going to attack me. But I want to let you know that if you get involved or not, the enemy is attacking. I hope you understand what I'm saying here today. The helmet is a vital piece for survival because it protects the brain and also the command station is the, is the head that controls the whole body. You could be a great warrior and have the best sword and the best shield in the world. But if you get a fatal blow to the head, it wouldn't even matter. If the body is not connected to the head, it's useless. It's useless. The same way if Jesus be in the head and we're not connected to him, Jesus said that apart from him we can do nothing. You can kill yourself doing all the things that you think, church people or church folks, that we should be doing, but if it's not the head telling you to do it, we're just wasting our time. That's the reality of this. That we need to make sure that the head is giving the instruction to the body so we can move to the place that God wants us to be. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for this day. We know, Lord, that you've given us the full armor of God, Lord, so we can put it on. We have to choose to put it on every day, Lord. It won't fall on us automatically. And Father, we know, Lord, that without your armor, Lord, we will not be able to make it in this world in the attacks that is coming against us daily from the enemy, Lord. So, Father, we put on the full armor of God today, and we ask you to be the head in control of this message, to be the head in control of every heart, to be the head in control of every word that is spoken, Lord, and that all of us understand that we are here because of the head. So we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Father. Move in this place. Make us uncomfortable, Lord, and help us to receive your word with joy, knowing that if it comes from you, Lord, is exactly what we need. In Jesus' name, we praise you and thank you. Amen. Amen and amen. So I have to read a portion of scripture, which is in Ephesians six seventeen. I don't know. It's up there yet. Okay. It says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I believe that Paul is going to be speaking about the sword of the spirit next week. But today I have to speak about the helmet of salvation. So we understand that the helmet is important for the survival of a Roman soldier because it keeps his head protected from the flaming arrows that the enemy was throwing towards him, but also from the sword of the enemy. So if you have your helmet, and when the shield cannot protect your head, you can count that your helmet will. It's not enough to just have the shield of faith without the helmet of salvation. It's not enough to have the belt of truth without the readiness for the gospel. It's not enough to have the righteousness of God, but care less about the shield of faith. It all has to be working together. And if you don't have the shield of faith, but you have the helmet of salvation, and you're walking around saying, I'm saved, but you don't believe what God is saying, don't get quiet on me now. We also know that without this helmet, any blow to the head will be fatal. And it would eliminate any and every chance a soldier has to defeat his enemy. If Christ is not the head, the enemy is going to get in our heads. And I'm going to get to that here in a little bit. We understand that the Roman soldier, when we saw Paul explaining the whole armor, I believe that the helmet was made out of iron. And the reason is made out of iron because iron is basically impenetrable. Jesus is the head, and if we stay connected to him, we are impenetrable. The enemy won't be able to get in in those areas that we let him in. Because sometimes we get too comfortable and we take our helmets off in battle. How many times God has given us a victory, and then we stop praying? How many times God brought victory in a situation and we asked God for a job and, jo and God gave us the job, but then we took our helmet off and stopped coming to church? I told you, y'all going to help me preach this today. Because I'm preaching to myself. This, this spoke to me first. I'm just relating what God spoke to me. So when we look at the helmet of salvation and we see all of this, we see that there, there's different characteristics about the helmet of salvation that protected the Roman soldier. Though I love to talk and, 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 and expand, expound on the whole armor and the strength and the greatness and the dominance of the Roman soldier in his history throughout you know, all the battles that they face, today I want to talk to you about the helmet of salvation and the importance of making sure that we as believers take this helmet of salvation and place it properly in our heads. Why? Because there are schemes that the enemy is devising right now against us. There are lies that are being formed against us right now. There are attacks that the enemy is planning right now against us, and if we don't have our helmet, we will get a fatal blow. 
He's not playing, guys. And neither should we. We need to be ready. Like Paul spoke, everybody with their shield, but also with their helmet. And let me tell you, if you're not a believer here today, my hope is that before you leave this place, you stop walking around this world with your head unprotected. Put on Christ today. Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Because tomorrow is not promised for anyone. 1 Thessalonians 5.8 says, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Paul is talking about the same helmet of salvation, but now he gives it a twist. He's saying the helmet of salvation is your hope. Oh, man, I don't know if y'all understood what I just said. The helmet of salvation is your hope. There's a lot of people walking around this world hopeless because they don't have the helmet of salvation. And this hope is not a hope that you wish for. Because sometimes when we hear the word hope, biblical hope is not a wish. Biblical hope is something that you anticipate with expectation and confidence. <laughs> let me let me stay calm. I'll see this. Slow down. This is extremely important because you will see that the helmet of salvation is the hope of certainty they cannot wait to receive that which is certain to come. Let me give you an example. How many of you here been engaged before? A lot of people are scared to say they've been engaged. What's going on? If you are engaged or if you were engaged to your husband or to your wife, you set a date for that to happen. You didn't hope to get married. You knew that the day was coming that you were gonna get married. So you were anticipating that moment with the expectation that that will come. That's what hope is. God already said that he's coming back. Jesus already said that he's coming back for you and me. So we got to be excited about the fact that there is a date that God has already said to tell you that he's coming back for you. So the helmet of salvation should give you that confidence of knowing that even though I'm facing this right now, it's not over because he's coming back for me. But this is only possible if you put your trust and confidence in him. What struck me is this. Paul is writing to believers. A lot of times we think that the Bible is for us to use it with the people outside. But this is for you and for me. He's saying, put on the helmet of salvation. How can you put something on that you're supposed to have already on? Because he knows that we have a tendency of taking it off when we get too comfortable in our walk. When the finances are right, now you stop praying because you don't think that God is somebody that you need anymore. Because when you look at your bank account, you're good to go. Let's be honest. When you don't have an issue, man, you don't wake up in the morning seeking God anymore. But let something happen. You want to put on the, the helmet, everything at once. I'm talking to myself. I do the same thing, guys. We need this word because we need to get it right. For this reason, we need to take the, battle, the, the, the helmet of salvation into battle with us because it is designed to protect us from the lies, the doubts, the tricks, 
The things that the enemy places in our hearts. And the things that we allow to come into our hearts. Because it's easy to blame the devil for everything. Man, the devil made me do it. Well, who told you to be watching that show? And then you get in nightmares and then you're wondering why you can't sleep. Oh, the devil. No, you. Be real. Yeah, the devil does his work, but we make it easy for him as well. We need to make sure that we put on the helmet. Why? Because there's the word of God. And there is promises in scripture that are yes and amen. amen. So when you put the helmet of salvation, no matter what you're going through, you can fall back on his word and that will protect your heart and your mind. Real quick, let us look at three reasons why it is important and vital to take the helmet of salvation and keep it on. Number one, the helmet of salvation protect the vital senses of the body. Do you know that your senses are connected to your head? And do you know that it is in your senses where the enemy is attacking us? And what we see, what we smell, what we hear, what we... So then we disregard all these other areas because we're just focusing on one and the enemy is just striking all over. Consider the fact that if your head and my head were unprotected, four out of the five senses will be vulnerable to attack. Think about that, guys. This is serious. Your senses are involved in this spiritual battle. When was the last time you heard that? That blew my mind. We're talking about your sight, hearing, smelling, and taste. These are all exclusive to your head. No wonder the enemy's attack comes through there and we're losing. These are called sensory, sensory gates. If you think about it, you look at a car, big old car, strong, with the battery and the big old engine, but let a sensor be gone. You can put your key in the car if you want and you can fight it all you want. You better get that sensor because the car won't start. And you can put on the helmet of this and the breastplate of that and the readiness of this and you can do all kinds of dances in church which is fine. That has its time. But what about the sensory gates? Are we protecting them? Second Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. You see how the sight is messing with us? Because instead of walking by what God is saying, I'm walking by what I'm seeing. So if I'm seeing that I'm having a hard time at home in my marriage, but then I look with my eyes and I see the neighbor enjoying his wife and his family, my heart begins to... Are y'all with me? Don't tell me I'm the only one that when he sees the prosperity of certain people and certain things that sometimes in your heart you're like, hmm, how come I'm not? That's not happening for me. No, I'm talking to myself. I'm sorry. I'm the only one. My bad. Okay, amen. We let our eyes dictate how we feel. And that's where the enemy is fighting us. We are looking at things that we shouldn't be looking at. And then we're falling into temptations that we shouldn't be falling into. But then we turn around and say the devil did it. Look at Eve. I can, use an ex I can use me, but let me use a biblical example better. The Bible says that Eve saw that that fruit from the tree was good. So God told you not to touch it, not to eat it, but your eyes took you to disobey God. How many times our eyes are taking us places that God is saying not to go? Amen. Me too. 
It's not about seeing. It's about believing. Romans 10, 7, 17 says, so, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If faith comes by hearing the word of God, why do I freak out when the news is saying all this stuff that it's saying? Think about it. When the pandemic first started, if you're honest with yourself, I'm being honest. Man, I was listening to all kinds of stuff and I was freaking out. Calling all kinds of people and just confused about the whole situation until God got a hold of my heart. And he said, stop hearing the news. Stop hearing family members. Stop hearing co-workers. Stop hearing your brothers and sisters in Christ that are not speaking the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. Not the word of man. Not the worries of people. Not what you think or what I think, but what God is saying. I'm not saying that you can't listen to your co-workers, to your brothers and sisters in Christ, to your parents, to your family members. I'm not saying that. Please don't misunderstand me. But if what you're saying is not aligning with the word of God, I got to cover my ears. Now, if you call me and in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of whatever situation, you give me a word from God, I'm going to listen to you all day. But we're spending too much time listening to things that are ungodly and then we're worrying why things are going the way they are. I'm going to give you a quick example. In 1 Kings chapter 13, there was a godly man that God sent to give a word to one of the kings of Israel. God gave him specific orders. You go there, you say this, and you go through that door. The man of God went and did that. And on his way back, an older prophet came to him and said, Hey, come over to my house. God had told him not to stop anywhere. And he said, Come drink with me and hang out. I'm going to make this short. He ended up going to the prophet's house and ended up getting eaten up by a lion. I wonder how many times God has told us specific instructions about what he wanted us to do. And we let a so-called prophet that had a word for us. Because we want to hear a word that's pleasing to me, not the word that God gave me. Brother, I know that I know that God told you this, but I let, let me prophesy to you right now that right now you will see the heavens open up and the cars will. Is that what God is saying? God can give you all of that. But if the instruction is walk this way, let's be obedient. It's not easy. Trust me. There's times it gets rough. This time I'm like, Lord, I don't even know if I'm being a good dad or a good husband or a good brother in Christ or a good man. I don't know, but help me. Because that's the path that you're calling me to walk. But we're letting too many things distract us because we're thinking about self. 2 Corinthians 2.15 says... For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those, are, those who are perishing. Let me hurry up here. Do you notice, like, in the cartoons, when somebody's angry, the bull yes. breathes hard? <laughs> right? And then if you notice somebody, when they're upset, they're breathing fast? <laughs> That's the aroma that we're giving onto people sometimes, the anger that we carry, <laughs> the bitterness and the resentment that we're carrying. <laughs> How are we smelling before the Lord? 
and we don't know that it is in that anger, in that resentment, and all those things that we're carrying that the enemy is fighting us. And it's okay to be humble and say, God, man, I'm having this issue. I need you. The problem is not the issue. The problem is what you do with it. The smell of alcohol is calling a lot of us. God is telling you to leave that alone, but you... <sighs> marijuana, whatever it is, stop it. You know why? Because other people can smell it. And it's not giving a good testimony of what, who God is and what he's supposed to be doing in your life. Yeah. 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 Psalms 34.8 said, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Man, ain't it crazy that you can taste God? That sounds crazy, huh? Taste God, what you mean? Get in his word. Get in his presence. Get in his bosom. Just lay next to him. And you'll be able to taste and see how good God is. Man, when I came to, to the Lord Jesus Christ, when he took me out of sin, and I tasted the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't ever want to go back to Egypt. Why do I want to go back? Why do we want to go back to Egypt? When you were a slave but now you could be free in christ but we still want to be slaves taste him when you go to a restaurant and you sit down and you have a nice meal you want to go back i like me a nice fat burger i like going back when it's nice and juicy <laughs> but we don't want to go back to the lord man what's going on with us Let's stop this and go taste and see that the Lord is good. It may not be good for you all the time, but he's still good. That burger that you like may not be good for you all the time, but it's still good. The fact that you don't like it all the time doesn't mean that it's not good. Taste it. Number two, the helmet of salvation protects our mind. <laughs> Listen, I, I love to read the Old Testament. I read the whole Bible, but I, I love the, my friend Joe will tell you, I, I love the Old Testament. And one thing I've noticed is that in the Old Testament, most of the battles were physical. You know, the Amorites, the Jebusites, all the ites were always fighting. <laughs> I had to say that, I'm sorry. But what's funny to me is, Something hit me, and I said, hold on. We're fighting the same enemies. But now we can't see them because the mind is the battleground. The same Midianites that were after the Israelites to, to enslave them is the same enemies that we're fighting in our minds today. Many of us don't go anywhere or do anything Besides what we know, because the battle is in the mind. And then, anxiety, depression, and all these things we're fighting, it's a result of what I'm fighting in my mind. Ah, uh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. If you have a headache, the headache is a symptom of something else. The headache tells you there's something moving, there's something else happening. Maybe you need water. Maybe you need food. I know when I get cranky, my wife says, you got to eat. <laughs> the kids know that. They know. Amanda's like, you got to eat, buddy. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, all these things that are manifesting come from something that we don't see, which is what our brother preached. And now they're fighting in our minds, and we're sitting here wondering what's going on. Well, these are internal enemies that we need to put on the helmet of salvation 
and trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross in order to defeat these enemies. Because in your strength and in my strength, we will never defeat these enemies. Amen? Romans 12, 2 says, Do not confirm to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. One thing I learned about God's will is his will, not mine. And I may not like his will. God might be telling me to go somewhere that I don't want to go, but it's his will. So sometimes when we read this, we like, oh, God's will is perfect and pleasing, meaning that we think that everything is going to go the way we think. No, it's pleasing and perfect to him to accomplish what he wants to do through us, so we must adjust to him and align ourselves with his word. That is the will of God. When we put on the helmet of salvation, we can fight against the sinful thoughts attacking our minds and focus on what is good and true. We live in a world that's full of craziness. We're going to, things are going to come up that are going to come against us as believers. That's why Jesus said, in this world, you will have affliction. He didn't say, hey, in this world, you just going to cruise. And man, just because you believe in me, man, just get on the cruise and go, you know, it's going to be nice. But he said, I have overcome the world. The helmet of salvation is to remind us that he overcame. And if Jesus overcame and you put your trust in him, we can overcome. We have to renew our minds by allowing the truth of God's word to wipe out anything contrary to his word in our hearts. Old ideas, the way I was brought up. A lot of us have strong strongholds in our minds. A stronghold is when you are confronted with a fact and you still fight because you think you're right, regardless of what somebody's showing you. That is a stronghold. No, I see this. I don't believe that. I don't think that's like that. But brother, it's right here. I'm, I'm showing it to you. The Lord says that. No. Because I was brought up that way and I, the church I went to, they didn't think that way. Bruh, I get it. But what is the word saying? And a lot of us have strongholds like that about the way I grew up, the way my mom did, the way I did. And that's fine because they helped us to grow. But what God is saying to you today through his word. As we wear the helmet of salvation every day, our minds become more insulated against the suggestions and the desires and traps the enemy is laying out for us. We choose to guard our mind every day with the word of God. The helmet of salvation in your life is the word of God. The minute we drop the word of God, the attacks are coming, the flaming arrows. It's amazing how you go a couple days without reading or praying and you already begin to struggle with your thoughts and with the things in your mind because you took your helmet off. Put your helmet on. Everybody go like this. Amen. Don't take it off. You may say, I'll see this. What are you doing? Well, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. You don't have to see the helmet. You got to believe that you have it on. Listen, I'm almost done. The helmet of salvation preserves the way of thinking. It guards us against false doctrine. There's a lot of false doctrine. And the scary thing about false doctrine is that it has 90% truth. You guys know that rat poison has like 99.5% of good stuff? And the 0.5 is what kills them? The same thing is happening to us in our churches and in our Christian lives. Because we're taking the helmet off, we're allowing that little percentage of poison to mess the way we think and, the, and what we believe about our God. And the helmet of salvation is to protect you and I from falling into the traps of false doctrine.
Here are several actions that we can take to keep the helmet of salvation fasting and on in our lives. Renew our minds. Remember that our mind is the battlefield. You can read Romans 12, 1 through 2 for that. Reject doubts that arise from circumstances. How many times circumstances make us turn away from what God is telling us to do because things are not going the way that we think it should go? Oh, they have it up there. Keep an eternal perspective. Remember that it's not about now. It's beyond now. And when we understand that there's something better beyond now, we will live now like if we understand that we will be there tomorrow. Remember the victory is already accomplished. You're not fighting for victory, but like Paul said, we're fighting from victory. You know that when you want a championship, you fight hard for the championship because you're like, man, I've never been a champion. But once you become a champion, everybody wants to take your title. So we as believers are fighting from a position where everybody wants this championship. The enemy wants to take the title that God has given you through the cross of Jesus Christ. And you got to fight from victory knowing that I already have a title. Eternal life already has been promised to me. The blood of Jesus covers me from all sin. So I'll fight knowing that this is where I stand. I'm not fighting for that anymore. I already have it. Those of you who don't know Christ, yes, you got to fight for this title. But if you're in Christ, you're fighting with the title. That sounds crazy, huh? Number three, and I'm closing. The helmet of salvation is only for those in Christ's army. The Roman soldier, the Roman citizen understood that in order for him to put on the full armor, he had to be part of the army. You can't get the full armor if you're not signed in to be part of the army. What makes us think that if we come to church but don't have a relationship with Christ, that automatically the armor is ours? Acts 4.12 says, salvation is found in no one else, but there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Listen, Buddha can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. The Pope can't save me or you. It is only Jesus. If you believe in Jesus Christ today, today is the day, today. Don't walk out of this place without knowing Jesus today. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, an armor is going to be given to you. And then you choose if you want to put it on. And put it on the armor it's so you can experience the fullness of what God has for us. There's a fullness in God that we can experience if we put on the full armor. If we stop walking in fear and in doubt. If we start trusting him more. Think about those of you who are parents. When you're, your kids don't worry about if they're going to eat today or no. That worry is on us. Not on them. They go outside and play. They don't know how the pocketbook is looking like. They don't know if mom and dad are arguing, struggling about what to put on the table, but they trust that they're going to eat. We need to have this same type of trust in our Lord Jesus Christ. You might say, why do I need to put on this helmet of salvation? For what? Ask a construction worker why he needs his helmet. And he'll tell you that if he doesn't have his helmet on, 
he runs the danger of something falling on his head and perishing. You may not think you need this, but we all need it. Those who are in Christ and those who are not in Christ need to put on the armor of salvation and the armor of God. Because if not, we won't be able to resist the blows that the enemy is coming to us with. Once I heard somebody said, casual Christians will be casualties. That blew my mind. Casual Christians will be casualties. Those who choose to be like, nah, that's not for me. That are supposed to be in the body of Christ, but don't want to engage in what God is calling us to do. We need to be careful. Because I believe that if everybody in here joins the armor and the army of God, we will be able to protect ourselves and each other the way God wants us to. Because when my shield is down, your shield can cover me. When your belt is falling off, I can come and say, hey, brother, sister, let me help you. Because that's what an army is about. If you ever watch movies about an army, they're always about a brotherhood or a sisterhood, about helping each other and giving the best, the very best for one another. Why is it that in the army of God, we are not doing that for each other the way God wants? Why? There's no excuse for us not to do it for each other. Especially when we have a God that did it for us first. He gave the example for us to follow. He said, listen, sometimes we want to evangelize people. And that's good. But Jesus said, love one another. And they will see that you belong to me. I can evangelize all day. Have the readiness of the gospel. But if I'm not loving you, but if I love you and they see that love, when we evangelize, they'll receive it because it's coming from a pure heart. And that's what we need. We need to belong to Christ's army and we need to put on the full armor of God that has to do with the equipment that God has given us to not only go out there and fight, but to make sure that we're helping and strategizing for each other in here. I like to call the worship team. I don't know if that's, they're available. In these last days, guys, we're facing an all-out attack. The enemy knows, like, his time is short. He's not playing. I've seen so many people battling so many things that is crazy. But it's because... We need to realize that we have an enemy. We have an enemy. This is real. And remember when Paul, in the book of Acts, I believe chapter 27, Paul was in a shipwreck. And they began to throw things out. Because if they kept all their luggage in the, in the, in the ship, they will sink. I think it's time for us to throw things out. All the things that we regard as valuable. I saw a video where the lady had a vision that Jesus came. And she was crying because she was left. And she began to say, all the things that I thought were important to me don't mean nothing. Because I did not go with Christ. That, like, 
man. All the stuff that we're fighting for is good. Don't get me wrong. We want to get the best education. We want to have the best things. That's fine. But be willing to let go when God is saying to let go. Because when the ship is wrecking, it doesn't matter what you have in there. Because all you need is the people that are in there with you. You matter to God. I matter to God. You should matter to me and I should matter to you. And I should be willing to let go of whatever it is that I'm carrying in my ship to make sure that I preserve you and that you preserve me. I'm going to end with this. I was reading these stories about soldiers that have been wounded in the head in battle. And I ran into a lot of soldiers and a long list of people that have been shot in the head. But they survived because they had their helmet on. Many of them didn't even know where the bullet was coming from. And one of them said that the impact was so hard that he thought that a rock had fallen on his head and he had a headache. But then when he looked at his helmet, he saw that it was a gunshot. You may, not, you may say, but I'm saved. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior already. I don't need to put a helmet on. But let me tell you that we don't know when the strike is coming. But we have a greater chance to survive if we put our helmet on every day and trust what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Stop fighting this battle on your own and let God fight this battle for you. Amen. God bless you. What a powerful message. Would you stand, please? I want to ask the, worship, uh, the prayer team to come up front and uh, to be available if somebody wants to pray with them. That is one of the most powerful messages that you will ever hear in your life. And today, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to move, move on hearts. You know, it's not just about hearing the Word of God, it's about acting upon it. And I want to invite you to come down at the altar. I, I, can we put those points, oh, we have the song. Think of those points that were up, the vital senses, protecting the vital senses, protecting our minds. And that's where the enemy strikes at our minds. And I just want to say, come to the altar ask God to protect your mind to shield your vital senses to be your protection to be your guide get that helmet on today as the worship team plays step out of your seat come forward and let's just pray at the altar would you come to the altar father I pray God that you would move upon this service move on hearts God that we would if we can't walk 10 feet or 20 feet God then how are we going to put on the helmet of salvation? And so, Lord, I pray that we would come forth now as you lead, as your spirit leads. And put that helmet on and protect that mind. Put away these things that are in our minds about culture and things like that that are not in line with the Word of God. That we would align ourselves with the Word of God. Holy Spirit, move upon this place and upon hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Would you come?
life on a firm foundation. Come forth and praise the Lord and just pray to the Lord. There's still time to come. Come forth. trust and faith in Christ, don't leave without receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I would like to invite you to come forth. I will personally meet you right here, and I will share with you how you can know for sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Worship team, lead us. Come if you need to come. Come just to worship. Come to sing.
humble hearts, hearts that praise you. And God, that we would not walk in the way that we think is right, because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are, the end is destruction. And God, we pray, God, that we would always stay in line with your word. If we get out of line, thank you for your gentle, gentle tug, and your love, and your kindness leads us back we can repent and lord i just thank you god for this message today i thank you god for the helmet of salvation providing to protect our senses to protect our mind to have a hope for the future and that hope is rooted in jesus christ y cristo vendrá otra vez podemos recosijar podemos alabar tu nombre Gloria sea al Señor. Y Señor, gracias por este día, por tus bendiciones. Gracias por el Espíritu Santo. Gracias por mover en este lugar. Cámbianos, edifícanos y ayúdanos a salir de aquí diferentes. Señor, perdónanos por nuestros pecados. Límpianos con tu sangre cubre nuestros mente, nuestras mentes God thank you, thank you, thank you protect our minds, protect our senses Lord we just thank you for this in Jesus mighty name I pray Amen and Amen thank you There's still if you want to pray you can pray if you want to return to your seat return to your seat God bless you, God bless you, God bless you I want to just go ahead and have a seat we're going to finish up here, but I want to just do two things. The first thing that I want to do is I want to thank you personally, all of you. Last month was Pastor's Appreciation Month, and the church gave Carla and I a gift, and you're the church. Amen? And so we just want to thank you, thank our 
the elders of our church and just thank you. We are humble. You know we love you. And it is our honor to serve you. And we want you to know that you are loved when you come to pain. There could be hard preaching behind this pulpit, but there is hard loving all the time at this place. We would love you and we appreciate you. I want to just do something. If we can have Cesar Triavaldos and his wife Yari to come forward. I just want to just let you know that Cesar and Yari, are you here? Can you come forth, please. So we've been praying about youth leaders and the Lord impressed on our hearts. If you guys could stand over here, that Cesar and Yari is not a staff position but as youth leaders, and I bring them forth because many are coming to the church and you're wondering, you have youth that are 12 years old until finishing high school. And you're wondering, like, how do I get my youth into the youth program? What do I do? And I want to introduce you to Cesar and Yadi. And we, we have a wonderful team, Adrian Gonzalez, and a wonderful youth team, and I could name them all. They're all great. So. Let's really pray for our youth ministry today. I want to dedicate this time. Do you know that the future of the, right here, the youth are so important. They're the future. But not only they're the future, they're the present. And I don't think we pray enough for our youth. I don't think we pray enough for our kids. And I don't think we pray enough for one another. But I say we pray for the youth today. Would you extend your hand towards Cesar and Yadi? And we, let's just pray for the youth ministry, which is so important. Father in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for Cesar and Yadi. We thank you, God, that the willingness of their heart and the attitude of their heart to serve with the others serving in the ministry, to join the team, to be a blessing. And God, thank you for these department leaders. And Lord, I pray that you would have your hand of blessing upon them. You would fill them with your spirit. God, we pray for the youth. Lord, I pray that this church would have youth that are on fire for God, that are learning the Word of God, that are walking, learning how to walk in the ways of the Lord. God, we pray for our youth. They're being bombarded by Satan on every corner, in every street, every angle. But God, we pray for our youth in this moment. We pray for protection for them. We pray, God, that you would give them a heart, Lord, a fire to serve you. We pray, God, that you would just open their eyes to the truth. Lord, we thank you for this day. We praise you. And we pray a blessing over Cesar and Yadi as they lead this youth ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give them a hand. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Greet them afterwards. And just tell them that you're praying for them. And just pray with them. I like to stop and just pray with people. If I hear a need, I just stop right there and I say, brother, let me pray for you. Sister, let me pray for you. It has been a blessing to be in the house of God today. Amen. Remember, sign-ups are open for next week, 9 and 12 o'clock. And we just want to say that the, the prayer team's up here. If you need prayer, please come up after the service for prayer. Our online audience, we love you. We just thank God for you. I was sitting up here while everybody was praying in the altar call, and I was praying for the people watching online. Do you know there could be someone on the other side of the world that hears this message today, their life is transformed, and then a whole community as they reach out becomes transformed. It just takes a little bit of fire to burn down a forest. We get a little bit of fire in here, and we can reach Panama, Panama City, and beyond with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the QR code is up for prayer on our online audience. Scan the QR code, and somebody will get with you to pray with you. All righty. We want to dismiss our online audience at this time. And we just want to say, if you're visiting for the first time, thank you for coming. Remember to go out those doors, take a right into the connect room. And we have a gift we want to give you. We just want to connect.